in to ACC football kickoff. Let's talk about Dave Doran's crew because he's getting ready for his 11th season in Raleigh. Just five wins shy of tying Earl Edwards for the most by an NC State head coach. History tells us there's a good chance he reaches that mark as his Wolfpack teams won at least seven games in eight of his first ten seasons. Coach Doran here on set with us now. Coach, always good to see you. Got to see some of your guys and visit with them a little bit, and that was fun. I know there's been some changes. You got some new faces and guys that have come and gone. What have you seen from this group that you have this offseason that makes you feel confident that they're going to be able to continue the success you guys have built there? You got a blend of uh, some unfinished business with some guys like Peyton Wilson and they played a lot of football for us. Um, Shy Battle, four-year starter, C.J. Clark, Savion Jackson, you know, uh, Dylan McMahon. So there's some experience. But then we lost some guys that have played a ton of football. Uh, so Isaiah Moore's gone. Drake Thomas is gone. Thayer Thomas is gone. Tanner Engel's gone. And the guys that were waiting behind them are now ready and, and excited and have a chip on their shoulder, which I like, you know. And so it's a unique team. I'm excited to see what we can do. Coach, I'm excited to see Robert and I get yeah. this offense going. Yeah. How did that whole thing play out? You know, uh, first of all, I've fired up for Tim Buck to be the head coach at Coastal. It's awesome for him. It's the fourth coach I've worked with now that's a head coach, so it's really neat to see that, you know, as your program. Um, but then when it started, I was just like, I've coached against Robert four times. It's never a fun thing to do. Yeah. He's very unique. Each time it was a different offense. Like, you know, how many offensive coordinators change that much? What he does is he tweaks things to fit the players, you know, and I think that's a unique thing to have. He makes our offense um, a tough prep, I think, for other defenses, just like our defense is a tough prep for other offenses. So it's really excited to get him. And then he had a relationship that was unique with Tony Gibson and my defensive coordinator, Ruffin McNeil uh, and Brian Mitchell. So he had worked with three of my coaches that could really talk to me about who he was as a man and yeah. as a husband, too. Coach, I know you're excited to not have to prepare for him yeah. uh, defensively to now be on the, the good side. Uh, you also bring in Brennan Armstrong, yeah. uh, a young man that is, when he's on, he's one of the best in the entire country, reuniting with Coach Robert and I. What have you seen from him from a leadership perspective so far? Well, he's an extension of coach. You know, he knows his language, and, and he can sometimes translate his language too, you know. So guys will be like, what's coach talking about? And Brennan can put it into player speak for him, you know. And so that's helped with the install, I think, having him. Because, you know, sometimes those guys go out on their own, and Brennan can talk to them. They can talk about experiences they've had. Hey, you remember when we played Pitt or when we played this guy, we ran this route. And so there's that, you know, back and forth that they have relationship-wise. And our O-line coach was with Brennan as well, Coach 2J. So he's got some, familiar, some unique familiarity with the, uh, the coaching staff that he may not have as a transfer normally. Changing to defense, Coach, I'm curious on, on tackling and how you teach it. I know a lot of people have quit tackling guys to the ground. I mean, when you scrimmage, do you still put them on the ground, or how do you guys teach it? Well, we do teach taking them to the ground in our scrimmages. Um, we'll have two or three live you know, scrimmages in fall camp. One of them will just be kind of a 10 to 15 minute short yardage goal line. The other two will be full blown. Um, the rest of the time we're like you were, thud, you know, where you're trying to tag off on the hip and allow the offensive players to advance and keep the guys up and, and safe. Um, you find out in the first game if you did a good job or not. Like last year, we did not tackle well in our opener. And from that, we learned a lot, I think, as players on how much we need to pursue the ball differently in practice. I think that's the biggest thing. Your guys have to sprint at the right angle and your offensive guys got to finish so that you have that real life moment of truth right. that happens on game day. Right. Well, Coach, watching the draft this well, a few months ago, uh, a lot of the corners now are tall and long guys. Aiden White's here, who fits that same bill. What's your expect expectation for him this year? We're excited for Aiden and, and for Shy Battle. We feel like we have two of the better corners in the country and they're both long guys. They're both guys that have played a ton of football. They can play press, they can play off, they understand our defense. Now, Aiden didn't give up a touchdown in league play last year, so we'd love to see that continue. And, you know, we want to do what we've done is, is get a lot of interceptions. Our back end's done a great job of that. Coach, this defense, as you said, interceptions, number one in the conference yeah. last year. Uh, you, you mentioned all those guys that you're losing, but you have the unique benefit where some of those guys were hurt and you've had to play yeah. other people and you and I have spoken about this before but who are some of those young guys that, that yourself but also them are can't wait to get in the game and they're ready this year 
Yeah, well, I think, you know, Jakeen Harris and Devin Boykin at safety have played a ton for us and, and now are the mainstays back there. Um, but at linebacker, I think, is where you'll see the, uh, the biggest probably, you know, guys that haven't played getting their time. Devon Betty at middle linebacker, Jalen Scott at outside linebacker have both played for us but haven't been starters, you know, unless there was an injury. Our D-line returns a lot of depth, and, and so I think that's where you're, you're going to see a, a very, very good unit. Coach, you had a quarterback in MJ Morris who we all deemed as a star. So we thought he was going to be the starter this year, but Brennan comes in. What was the conversation like with him? Yeah, we're really excited about MJ's future and, and uh, just felt like with Devin leaving and also losing, you know, Finley, that that room was short. We needed to bring someone else in to compete. Um, when it ended up being Brennan, you know, getting a guy that's played that much football, uh, it doesn't decimate or diminish anything that MJ's done. We're so excited about him and the way he leads and what's in front of him. But he's 19, he's played in five games. Brennan's 24 and has played in 30. So there's obviously, you know, a distinguished difference there between that. Did he take it well? Because with the transfer sure. portal and all of that. You know, like anybody, he wants to play. He understood where I was coming from. Um, he's super confident. We're going to need them both. We all know that. It'd be great if we could redshirt him. Uh, I wanted to redshirt him last year and just couldn't because of the bombs that went off having to play four quarterbacks last year, you know. But I think if we could redshirt him and set him up to be the guy for three years, that would be phenomenal. If we can't, he understands his role, and I know he'll push Brennan every day in practice. You know, going, staying on Brennan, uh, I don't remember the exact timing, but exactly how did you get him? I mean, was it coach first and then, then he came? Yeah. or? Exactly. I mean, I'm not exactly sure how the portal works as far as the, the nuts and bolts. I mean, the nuts and bolts of exactly, you know, he hits the portal. Were you there that moment? Or, I mean, I was just curious how it went down. You know, we hired Coach and I. Uh, when he came in, we were in bowl practice. So I said to Coach, hey, I want you to evaluate our offensive roster and then tell me where you think we can go out and help the roster in recruiting, whether it's high school, whether it's uh, in the portal. And he came in and did that. And he came to me with a couple positions he wanted us to target. Quarterback was one of them. And then we went to the guys in the recruiting office and said, I need a list of every quarterback, every this, every that. We already knew where some of them were. Um, and then I saw Brennan's name on the list. I'm like, so we're we gonna talk about this or not? Right. <laughs> He's like, yeah, but we gotta recruit him. You know, he went to Oklahoma State, he went to Wisconsin right. on visits. That's it wasn't like a phone call, he's coming. Right. We had to recruit him hard and work. it wasn't as easy as I think people assumed that it was just a phone call. It was right. Brennan wanted to get to know our program, our players, our defense. Right. He wanted to be on a team. Got a chance. You know, and, and I think having two coaches he was with was a part of the process, but he wanted to get to know way more than that. Right, it's good. Coach, to have guys like him who have played so much football and know what this last year means, and a guy like Peyton, who I'm sure you were so excited once you heard he was officially coming back, especially with some of the changes around there, to have like foundational pieces um, with guys like them that know that this is their last year, that's got to be monumental when you're trying to continue to build what you've done the last 10 years. Yeah, I think it helps. You know, I mean, having to completely start over when you lose all these guys is really hard. And, I, and I've unfortunately had to do that, you know, one year we had a bunch of guys leave and then a bunch of guys injured. And uh, you want to have your culture passed down through the years and you want your players to be partially responsible for teaching it, you know, and helping the guys learn how to do it and what the standards are and, and teaching them why, you know, and, and telling their life story to these younger players. And so we've had that ability with some of the guys staying for 60 years, it's really helped. We had a super old team last year, but this year we still have some of that, you know, and I'm going to miss Grant Gibson and Isaiah Moore, and, and it's nice to still see them come through the building every now and then. But I'm so excited for Peyton, you know, for him to be able to have that opportunity now as a leader in our locker room. Coach, one of the big changes this season is we don't have the Atlantic or the Coastal anymore. Yeah. Are you in support of that change? I'm fired up about it. Uh, I, I've been in... <laughs> Hoping for this since I got in the league. <laughs> it's been a minute. Yeah, I mean, like when I walked in the league, Florida State was on top. Uh, Louisville was was rolling, and Clemson was climbing to become that team. And so we had all three of them standing there. And then you know, myself, Syracuse, and Wake have built our programs up. And I've had two years where we've had the second best record in the league in the league in the league play, and haven't had a chance to play for it. And I believe the best two teams earn the opportunity to play it off on the field. That's how it should be. Let them fight even if it's a rematch. Let them go fight for it. That's my thoughts on it. And I don't know how it plays out in the playoff picture, but 
12 games ought to be worth that amount of work for one game, in my opinion. No, we're jacked up for it. So I think we, it's a great opportunity yeah. for everybody yeah. involved, Coach. I, I want to go back to Coach Robert and I and just the uniqueness. You talk about, man, you're, you're happy you don't have to go against it. What makes it so difficult? What makes it so unique? You know, I think uh, he's super creative, for one. He's not one of these guys that's, oh, I can't do that, or I won't do this, or like, I brought him in to watch the Super Bowl with me. We watched the Chiefs offense because him and Andy Reid have a history together. And we're, he's talking me through it, you know, like the stuff. And I'm like, man, I would love to put some of this in. He's like, sure, let's go. I mean, you know, and some of the other guys I worked with, like, oh, I can't do that. Or, you, know, you know, and he said, like, yeah, let's try it, you know. And I'm like, well, how are you going to do it? He's like, well, let's do it. You know, and um, he figures out how to teach it to the guys. And that's his thing is he wants the information to go from him to the players with ease. And, and he takes pride in the fact that young guys can play early. How he signals things and names things is very player friendly for the players. And that's going to help us, you know, because if somebody goes down and you got to insert someone else that they can step in and have that same impact. The other thing that makes him unique is that his system changes with the talent. If he's got a freak show tied in, that guy's going to be featured. If he doesn't, then it might be two running backs. If he doesn't have that, they may be an empty, you know, like he can do a lot with his packages. Well, Coach, we can't wait to see what you guys are able to do, what him and Brennan Armstrong are like back together. We'll talk to Brennan in just, I think, a few minutes. Look like 150. He'll join us here on this set. And we'll see you for our second stop of our ACC Summer Tour on August 8th. Look forward to having you all. We look forward to more food recommendations from you because last time you were spot on with that one, Coach. I'll take care of you. Uh, <laughs>